How's that, folks? Today we're talking all things cricket, from ball tampering to spin kings. We've got it all. I'm talking Michael Clark, Shane Warne, Steve Smith, Ashton hey. Aik. Yeah? Football. We're talking about football. What? Give me that. Football? Football. I thought, I thought it was cricket. Oh, shit. Today on the show, we have a sit down with AFLW young gun Elise Gamble from the Western Bulldogs. Then we go to the MCG to get amongst the culture, the passion and the meat pies. Then, just after our halftime oranges, we come back into the studio for an interview with football mega fan Dom Kugno and play a little bit of a game. Bucks up, boys and girls. It's me, your water boy, Aaron Drew. And joining me, as always, is Miss Football herself, Erica Lewis. Today we're taking a specky into the spine of football itself, but to do that we're going to need some help, Aaron. That we will, Erica, and it's fair to say that us interviewing a footballer will be just as embarrassing as a Snapchat from Josh Bootsma. So we enlisted some help from the very best. That's right, Aaron. For a sit down and chat, we organised with AFLW superstar Elise Gamble and an interviewer who knows his Jack Rewald from his Nick Rewald, star of the hip and shoulder Collingwood mega fan William Mallett. Hi, I'm Will from the Hip and Shoulder, and today we're at the Witten Oval and we're amazingly lucky to have an interview with up and coming Bulldogs player Elise Gamble. So come on, let's head in and let's have a chat to her. Um, yeah, when I was in grade 10, I, that's when I first actually started playing football. Female footy just really jumped onto, um, onto the TV screens yeah. and started to become a, a, really, a really big thing. And, and then it just took my interest straight away, and I was like, oh, this would be really cool to um, have a go at. If you were to ask any of my friends, I was that. I was <laughs> that little girl that was probably a bit more competitive yep. than anyone else and I wanted to be the best and I wanted to make the top level of whatever yep. I did. So um, to transition into football and, and actually make the elite level at this sport is something that I'll always be proud of. What's it like coming to a footy club where you've got the likes of Ali Blackburn and Katie Brennan and they're yep. the absolute you know, they're the absolute stars of the game and, and you get to play you get to run out onto yeah. the field with them, what's that like? Yeah, so I've been a part of the Bulldogs for, um, since day dot now, so oh, um, since, um, for, yeah, for a few years. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, when I first moved over and walked into the club, it was a bit surreal. I'll still look up to, to those girls so much and um, and that's probably why they're our co-captains. What, what do you see for the, for the AFL women's? You know, do you, do you wanna do you want to start playing on the MCG? Do you wanna get to the bigger stadiums? Where do, where do you see the women's footy in, you know, five, 10 years from here? Yeah. Right now, we have to consider the fact that um, the competition is still very raw and fresh. We've only um, we're only coming into our, our fourth season in 2020, so um, it's going to take time for the league to grow and develop. So we will eventually get to where we um, where we're heading. But um, yeah, to answer your question, I think yeah, 18 teams, full-time athletes, um, not having to work on the side. Whether yeah, it just becomes a norm that the females play and then the males. We don't want it to be look like where the curtain raises towards yeah, the male yeah. games. Coming into the 2020 season, we are we're already um, four more teams are coming into the competition. So. Um, and that's amazing. So there's going to be an extra 120 girls in the next, um, in the next, within the next 12 months, wearing an AFL jersey and, and living out many childhood dreams. I remember seeing yeah, Darcy Guthridge walking along. Yep. And she's handing out banners, and just this swarm of, of little girls, and you know, and they yep. they loved her, and they were her idol. That that must be special to you, sort of being able to be a part of this movement. Yeah. Oh, of course. I think. Um, we, it's just, I think it's just amazing how much support there is for um, the AFLW competition. A lot of the people that come to watch our games, they might, may not be football, football fans or even Western Bulldog supporters or whatever team they're back for. They're just here in support of females doing great things. Well, Elise Campbell, thank you very no much. No worries, and thanks for having me. For thank next you. season and beyond. Thank you. Thank you very much. What an absolutely amazingly talented woman she is. And we're certainly brand new fans of the base of her career. Make sure you check out the new season of the AFLW starting next February in 2020 to watch them in action. Oh, but Erica, I want to watch football now! <sighs> well, Aaron, luckily the men's season is in full swing and we went down to see the aftermath of a Western Bulldogs versus Collingwood game to check out some of the passion for ourselves. I'm Erica. 
reckon I'm outside the MCG where Collingwood and the Bulldogs are bursting in a match tonight. Right now I'm out here searching for passionate football fans to conduct an interview with. So come on, let's go see if we can find some. I'm here with Sinead Maletta. And tell me, how long have you been a Collingwood supporter for? Since 2003, since I was born, you know. Oh, wow, that's yeah. amazing. Did your family have some influence over what team to choose? Yes, I was brainwashed by my auntie. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm here with... What's Christina your name? And Natalie. Natalie. And you guys are on competitive teams, <laughs> competing teams. Tell us a little bit about how you got into football. We've been following football for... How many years? Since we were little. Yeah. What's it like sitting in the um, audience, being side by side one another? Do people like give you like funny looks that you guys are friends and you go for support different teams, or is it just like all fun and? Oh, it's all yeah. fun. It's you know, all we fun. Each other we're a bit until crazy. It's, until it's yeah. Over. Thank you so much for Thank doing you. the interview with Thank us. You. Good luck for the game. Hope either one of your teams wins. Like you know, <laughs> don't know which one to go for <laughs> just yet, but <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, unfortunately, I couldn't get any tickets to get inside this magnificent event of Australian football. However, there's so many passionate fans who are enjoying the game right now. I've had a great time tonight. Back to you in the studio. Today, we're lucky to have a very special guest in for an interview. You may have heard him on the Hamish and Andy show. He is possibly the biggest football fan our country has to offer. The one and only Dom Kuno. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks for, for having coming me. in. Welcome. So, Dom, what is football? What are your predictions for the top eight this year? Ooh, okay. Um, well, I'm going to be a little bit biased, but I do believe that Collingwood will be in the top four this year. Um, mm. I think... I think GWS will be around the mark because they've got a very talented team. I think the way Geelong has started this season so far, I believe they'll continue to go that form and they will compete very highly in September. Um, you can never count out West Coast. They won the Premiership last year and Richmond's always a very good team. So I think they're probably in my top five. I think Essendon can definitely play finals and you'll be happy with that. Probably a couple more, a couple more teams. There's about six or seven teams fighting for those other two spots, but I definitely feel... Hawthorne will be around the mark. I think Port Adelaide, Adelaide, they'll be around the mark as well. So it's a it's a very hard eight to predict this mm. year because it's wide open. Anyone can fit in. Yeah. Well, who do you think your tip is for a brown low? Ooh, um, I think Patrick Dangerfield could win it again. He did mm -hmm. win it in 2016. Um, the way he's playing, he can definitely win it again this year. I think Lockie Neal at Brisbane is a big chance as well this year. He's you know, started the season very well and he can continue his form. I can definitely see that. Um, maybe Bontempelli from the Bulldogs. He's yeah. also, he is a very good player. And the other smoky I can think of is Patrick Cripps from Carlton. His team may, may not win as much games this season, but he will get every vote, most, most votes that his team will get this season. So he's a smoky. I also wanted to ask, at what age did you realise that you were like a walking, talking encyclopedia? Ooh, okay. Um, so... Did it come naturally or, or did, you just, did you apply yourself to the... Well, probably a bit of both, actually. So uh, when I was seven, that's when I started to religiously follow AFL football. Did from... you collect the cards and stuff? Yeah, and that's right. <laughs> yeah. So I collected the footy cards. Um, I bought all the encyclopedia books. I read them a lot. Um, yeah. It's a funny story. So when I was... For my ninth birthday, my uncle actually bought me this grand final encyclopedia where I had all the grand final results from uh, when it, the year it started in 1897 all the way through to 2001. And when I was a kid, I used to just, you know, go to bed and read that book every single night. And I was just so <laughs> invested into it. I just loved it. That was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we were talking a little bit before we went on air. Does this run in the family? Do people in your family go for Collingwood? So and who were you inspired by? I was inspired by my father and my uncle. Mm -hmm. They're two big Collingwood supporters. The rest of the family aren't exactly big on sport altogether, let alone football. So I'm basically the outlier with when it comes to that. But... Um, so, family roots, we're all Collingwood supporters. We're from that side of town up in the northern suburbs where it's mostly Collingwood there anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, it sort of was like a natural transition for me to just jump into it. And then once I started to get emotionally invested into it, I've just, you know, taken it to a whole new level. <laughs> Have you ever thought, I know enough about footy now and now I'm ready to move on to the next thing in my life? Or is football like the be all and end all? Is, is football you? Uh, football will always be me. But football number one, till the day you die. <laughs> like, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're very knowledgeable about football. Like you 
pretty know the ins and outs of every single game whatsoever, especially Collingwood. Um, are people surprised about the amount of knowledge you actually know? Um, to strangers, yes, but when people know me, they're not that surprised at all because they know how I... You, you know, live and breathe football. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you Oz kick as well? I like, did do yes, Oz kick. Slow. I did. Yeah. I did it for five years when I was a little tucker. Um, <laughs> from grade <laughs> two to grade six, I believe. So, yeah, a long time ago now. So, yeah. Uh, Best part awesome. of Aussie culture. Now, you were recently on the Hamish and Andy podcast. Yes, Now, that went viral. And I, did. I was wondering if I could ask how that came about. So, one of my old friends from school, he, um, he messaged me on Facebook quite a few months ago and he saw that Hamish and Andy were looking for uh, people with extraordinary talents to go on a new podcast ah, show beautiful. and he said to me look I think you should apply you should tell them about your grand final knowledge your ability and you should you know just put yourself out there and just see what happens so I didn't really think much of it um, I thought okay I'll apply I'll um, see what happens I just wrote down you know what my uh, abilities are who I am as a person and then yeah within nearly a month later their producer called me and said look we've come across your file on our desk and it sounds amazing. Mm. We would love to get you on the show. Fantastic. And I said, absolutely, I can't wait to, um, I'd love to go on. We'll be mingling so, with all the math yes. stars in no time. Right? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Beautiful. Now, uh, we have devised a little bit of a game show here on Fanbase. It's a little quiz show we like to call What, what Does, does he, he Know with, with Dom Cunio? <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to our mini show, Insider Show, What's to Know with Dom Cunio. As always, I'm your host for the most, Aaron Drew. And I'm your host for both, Erica Lewis. This is of course the show where we ask Dom Cunio, a footy mega fan, what Q knows. Dom, are you ready? I was born ready. Question number one, Dom, which 1990s icon sang As I Lay Me Down? Go. That's not a footy question. Yeah, I just, I just want to see what he knows. Okay, I wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> All right, I'll ask you a couple <laughs> one then. Um, which team was the first non-Victorian team to win a premiership? That would be West Coast in 1992. Oh, good on ya. That's exactly <laughs> right. Good on ya. Good on ya. Um, Don, who won the Norm Smith medal in 1986? Uh, uh, Hawthorne. Uh, that would be Gary Ayres from Hawthorne. Oh, correct. Mm. <laughs> Real one. <laughs> that is so unreal. That's crazy. Like, it's so crazy that's, how you know crazy. <laughs> it's so crazy. Your turn, Erica, go. <laughs> okay, so who is the longest running coach in the league? Currently, it would mm -hmm. be Alistair Clarkson at Hawthorne. Oh my how God. does he know mm. this? And again, and again, it's almost like he spent his whole life like rehearsing yeah, for I this know. moment. My exactly. turn. On Saturday the 1st, 1978, <laughs> Richmond versus Carlton, who won? <sighs> Richmond would have won that game. I would have won by 77 points. Oh! <laughs> I'm actually That's genuinely unreal. surprised. What? <laughs> um, all all right. Right, well, who was the lead scorer in 1912? Oof. That's going a bit back. Going, going back a bit back far, 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 far. <laughs> back, back, far. This is before the Colin Medal actually came out. Um, 1912, 1912. Yes. Was football even invented in 1912? Yeah. So oh. 1897 was the first year when they started the VFL. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Learning stuff here on uh, on uh, fan base. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go. All right. Uh, 1912. I believe that was a Melbourne player. I think his mm -hmm. name was Harry Brereton. Whoa. Yep. What correct. if I told you you're wrong? <laughs> no, you're right. No. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. Good one, Erica. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're getting near the end. Who won the grand final in 1938? Oh, Carlton won that grand final. Oh, good job. <laughs> How many points did St Kilda win by against Collingwood in the 1966 grand final? One point. Ooh, one point is correct. Okay, next question. Don't know how he's did you that. know Mason Cox is American? How oh. crazy is that? Oh, very crazy. This is crazy. Mm. I'm just, I just was wondering uh, if you knew that. <laughs> I knew that, yep. I love Mason Cox. He knows. <laughs> Well, I don't know how you did it, Dom, but I think you've gotten every single one of those correct. So I'm um, sure totally impressed. I tell you what, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yes. Thank you very much. Appreciate thanks being for joining on. us. Thank you. Next week, we're making like a dying star and going supernova. That's right, it's our very own TV show about TV shows. Very meta. Well, make sure you come back next week to see what's up. I've been Aaron Drew. And I've been Erica Lewis. Thanks so much for watching.